What's up everybody, welcome back to my final episode of my OSCP journey. Now as you can probably already tell by the title of this video and that introduction that yes I have finally, finally passed the OSCP. This has come after some highs and lows and some setbacks, so for those who have been following along you may know that my first attempt was cancelled uh, midway through just due to my internet dropping out. Then my first real attempt was fouled with uh, 55 points, uh, 60 including the lab report. Um, and now I've been able to almost double that score and get the maximum score of 100 points plus the five, um, the five points from the lab report, which would be ignored anyway. So 100 points, I managed to complete it with a perfect score, which is just insane. Um, Furthermore, I did so in about 12 hours, including breaks. So I think I had about two hours worth of breaks throughout the day. Um, so yeah, in about 10 hours of actual working time, I was able to get a, get the full full mark. So this is just really surreal at the moment because I only just woke up this morning to see the confirmation email. Um, I've always just kind of thought that oh, maybe I did something wrong, maybe maybe there was a problem with my report, I might not pass, but um, I think that's just self-doubt getting you. But self-doubt has been a great motivator for me to um, achieve the score that I did. Now a lot of people have been asking me in the past day or so how I uh, what different what what I did differently in between my first reel and second reel uh, attempts and I thought about this and I can kind of think of two two things um, firstly is just I can't overstate it enough but just relax uh, throughout the whole time I was pretty chill other than some nerves just at the beginning um, and obviously it's hard to switch these nerves off this exam is nerve-wracking um, but as some psychologist friends described to me that your cognitive function is going to be somewhat impaired if you are feeling strength, stressed and anxious. Um, so just try to find a way to mitigate that stress. For me, it was kind of easy. I haven't got any promotions or job offers waiting on me to get my OSCP. It's just purely uh, been an endeavor I've done for myself. So I can kind of adapt, adapt a much more relaxed attitude to it and sort of like, yeah, I'll pass when I pass sort of attitude. Uh, while for others I know that might be a bit more pressure. My second point is we tend to focus really a lot of our attention on um, cracking machine after machine after machine after machine and that's sort of like the whole ethos if you will of off offensive security um, and the whole culture in the community and while I don't disagree with that per se I think it's only part of the picture. Um, what I found really, really helpful for me was reading over my notes and looking for sort of patterns that have emerged. Um, this was particularly helpful for privilege escalation. I've always saved my enumeration scripts, so linpeas, winpeas, always save those outputs. So as a revision exercise, I got all my outputs, put them all in a, fo in a folder and just went through them one by one I didn't know what machine they belonged to, so I just read, read that output and sort of saw what the privilege escalation method would be from reading um, the particular um, enumeration outputs. Um, I found in 95% of the case that the enumeration script would have the privilege escalation method, and those that didn't were those really obscure hack the box machines that um, yeah work off some real obscure privilege escalation method. So I think doing that revision will really help you uh, understand the common things that you see in privilege escalation enumeration as well as sort of the patterns that you take uh, to get that initial point of ingress, your initial shell. So take that with a few grains, grains of salt. That obviously worked for me, but I realize we all have different learning styles. So other than that, people have been asking me what I will be doing post OSCP, and I've already really worked that out. Um, I'm not working on certi security certifications right now. It's been a very busy couple of years uh, getting the ones that I've got. I need to take a break and really 
uh, work on myself again. Due to my OSCP commitment, I hadn't gone to the gym. I haven't practiced yoga in about a year. Um, so I really need to get back to doing the things that I like and seeing people again and hobbies and this YouTube channel, actually. I've got, um, I've been saying it for a while, but I've got big plans for it and I'm sort of pivoting it in the YouTube documentary type style where it will be appealing for both a general audience and an experienced cybersecurity professional alike. So yeah, hang tight for that. I'm really excited to pivot this channel in this new direction. Um, but don't worry because I still will be offering some sort of uh, reviews and somewhat mentorship as I have been doing. Lastly, I just wanted to give a shout out to my proctor, Riley. Riley, if you're watching, uh, thanks for cheering me on. Um, it was really, really great having you there with me um, as I got the 65 points and 75 and then the 100. Uh, thanks for encouraging me and uh, yeah, calling, calling me a Jedi. And to all of you who have supported me on this journey over the past few months, thank you so much for all your kind comments, your support on YouTube and Twitter. Um, it's really been great having so many people um, behind you cheering you on. So thank you all so much again. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. I'm really, really buggered. Um, so I am going to try and get some rest. Um, but stay tuned for the next episode of Hacking History. I'm really hoping to have it out by Monday next week, but expect delays. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done in time, but it's going to be big. So, you know, if you haven't already, subscribe, ring the bell. Can't wait to release this video. It's going to be awesome. But until then, I'll catch you in the next one.